Voters spread across more than a million square kilometers went to the polls yesterday. And while we all know the big picture now, for some regional perspective on what the voters said, we're joined by, in Thunder Bay, Sharnell Anderson, who covers the Northwest for Ontario Hubs, in the nation's capital, Ontario Hubs editor Sarah Trick, and in the Hammer, Justin Chandler, who covers the Hamilton Niagara region. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Jane. Hello there. All right, Charnell, I want to start with you. Last night, Doug Ford said, if you're a miner in the north who's out of work, I want you to know we're building that road to the Ring of Fire. Why the nod to the north? Yeah, I think, you know, well, as Aaron Kelly said on the show last night, this wasn't a, an election about issues. Um, and I think that's clear when you look at the, the campaigns. All four parties sort of had... Um, a lot of similar promises for the uh, for the north, from you know the Ontario North ran to, Ontario Northland to the Ring of Fire um, to highways. But I think you know the PCs have been more aggressive on some of these issues, like the Ring of Fire, which, as you say, uh, Doug Ford mentioned in his speech last night. And you know he famously said that he'll hop on a bulldozer himself in order to get it done. Um, but first, there needs to be a highway going up there. And of course, there's been objections from a number of First Nation communities whose territory that road would run through. Um, so, you know, I expect some of those issues, uh, some of those disagreements to continue. And then um, another big project in the region that um, the PC support is the widening of Highway 17 from Kenora to Manitoba. And so that's something that Greg Rickford, who won his seat in Kenora Rainy River fairly, uh, fairly comfortably last night, um, he's championed the widening of Highway 17 since his time as an MP in 2009. Um, and, you know, the Ford government awarded a contract to begin work on that earlier this year. So I think we'll see pro uh, more progress on that as time goes on. Very nice. Well, let's head over to Justin. The NDP, they lost a number of seats. And I'm curious, what does a re-elected PC government mean to the Hamilton-Niagara region? Well, one big thing that I'm going to be curious about, and I know a lot of people in town will be wondering about, is the urban boundary decision that Hamilton City Council made. They decided that instead of expanding the urban boundary, they are going to freeze it and intensify development within the city. And that's something that the PC government has sort of said that, man, maybe that doesn't go with what we want. Um, so there's some speculation that uh, potentially they could overturn that decision. And that's something uh, the other parties all said that they were not going to do that. Uh, the PCs have kept it open with Donna Skelly saying uh, she was the former sitting member in Flamborough, Glanbrook, who won her seat again yesterday. Um, but she has said uh, that it's something that they're going to wait and see more to you know, determine what Hamilton's plan is and what the party wants to do. All right, and then Sarah, uh, Ottawa residents, uh, some of them have been rather disappointed with Doug Ford recently. Tell us about that. Well, Jan, as you know, Ottawa's had a fairly challenging six months. Um, in the beginning part of the year, there was the Freedom Convoy, which was very difficult for downtown residents as they tried to navigate their daily lives. Um, just recently, we had a storm that left the majority of the city without power. And, and I believe there are still some that don't have power back yet. And um, during this crisis, there's been a sentiment throughout Ottawa that um, Doug Ford's government doesn't really care about Ottawa residents, that perhaps they don't see people in Ottawa, as, or they don't see Ottawa as a real place or as their responsibility. They, they seem to see it as federal territory. Whether or not that is true or fair, um, I can't comment on. But I do know that I see this, um, um, these, I see the sentiment among the residents of Ottawa. That being said, Ottawa has reelected several PC MPs last night, including two, form, um, two cabinet ministers. All right, we'll delve into that sentiment a, a little later on in the program. So let's get into the results because there are some interesting storylines, some interesting upsets. And we want to start with Charnel. Gilles Bisson spent a lot of time, uh, has a lot of history in, in that riding of Timmins. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so yeah, there were a couple of big upsets in the North. And I think the biggest surprise, uh, surprises based on the parties that won these ridings historically are in Timmins and Thunder Bay Atacokan. So over in Timmins, uh, Gilby Song was the former sitting member who represented the region for 30 plus years through, I think, three different iterations of the riding there. Um, he was originally elected in Cochrane South in 1990, and most recently in the last election in the riding of Timmins. But uh, last night, Bisson lost his seat by a fairly large margin, um, over 5,000 votes, to PC candidate George Peary, who uh, was serving as the mayor of Timmins. And um, 
besides that, it was a pretty tight race in Thunder Bay out of Koken. Uh, that writing has been read uh, going back to its creation in 1999. Uh, and Bill Morrow, who is now Thunder Bay's mayor, represented that writing for a long time um, until 2018 when the NDP's uh, Judith Monteith Farrell took it with only 81 additional votes. So it looked like it might be a tight race, and it was, but um, it was the PC's Kevin Holland, who was mayor of Conway Township just outside Thunder Bay, who took that seat by about 900 votes or 36% of the vote. And the former NDP member got 32% of the vote. So that was pretty close. And, oh, sorry. I was going to say, very interesting stuff when you look at it. Two NDP, two orange writings that both flipped to blue. Uh, I want to head over to Justin. Some very, very interesting stuff. Uh, I want to start off with Haldeman North. Uh, they elected an independent MPP. And I think a lot of people, when they saw the results, probably said, something's wrong here. What happened? But there's a whole storyline. What happened? Yeah, so Haldeman Norfolk. Um, it, it was predicted that it was going to be a PC pickup. Uh, Ken Hewitt, the PC candidate, was the mayor of Haldeman County, um, but he ended up running against Bobby Ann Brady. And Bobby Ann Brady was a longtime uh, conservative uh, PC party insider. Uh, she worked for the previous MPP, Tony Barrett, and when he announced that he wasn't going to run again, he said that she should be his successor. And uh, based on the reporting that I've read about this, um, the party said, no, we don't want that. And so Bobby Ann Brady decided she would run, and uh, Barrett helped her with her campaign. And yeah, she ended up winning by, I think it was a, around a couple thousand votes. Uh, so a pretty secure victory for her. Um, and it was kind of funny, the Hamilton Spectator had a picture of her holding up a banana. And uh, mm -hmm. apparently something that she has said was that uh, a member of the PC team told her that they could run a monkey in the riding, and it would win as long as it had the PC logo on its back. Uh, so she had that banana on election night uh, in reference to that, uh, to celebrate her victory. Very, very interesting there. All right, I wanna move over to Hamilton East Stony Creek. Both of us uh, Hamilton guys, so uh, I know this was a race that we were both looking at. Uh, tell us about that. No sitting members in this riding, very close between the top three there. Uh, Paul Miller, of course, that's a recognizable face in that riding. Tell us about this one. Yeah, this is the only other riding in the Hamilton Niagara area that I was covering that um, that actually changed hands. So this was previously an NDP riding for a long time. Paul Miller held it. Um, but then there was a schism in the party. Um, Paul Miller was accused of Islamophobia uh, and ousted from the party. He has said that uh, that's not the case. He's denied that. He's actually suing the party. So there was some drama there. Uh, the NDP ran a candidate um, and they ran against uh, a current city councilor, Jason Farr and against Neil Lumsden, who was a Hamilton Tie Cat uh, and a big wig uh, football player, a Canadian Hall of Famer. And it ended up being that uh, Lumsden won. So this longtime NDP seat is now a PC seat. And that's the only one in Hamilton that uh, changed hands. All right, I want to move to Ottawa. Uh, Sarah, earlier we talked about the sentiments there in that region. What can you tell us about how voters showed last night? And we'll start off with Ottawa Centre. Well, Ottawa Centre is interesting. It was supposed to be a seat that the Liberals could pick up that was in contention. At very least, it was going to be a close fight between Joel Hardin of the NDP and the challenger Katie Gibbs of the Liberals. As you can see there, it was not a close contest at all. Hardin cracked 30,000 votes and may have had more votes than any other um, MPP standing for election last night. And we know that Joel Hardin as well is potentially a name that's being thrown out as a potential NDP uh, leader contestant there. And uh, I want to talk about another riding that we've been watching, a close race between the NDP and PCs in Ottawa, West Nepean. Tell us about that. Well, although the NDP did lose several seats to the PCs, this was actually one that they picked up. Chandra Pazma of the NDP took the seat from Jeremy Roberts of the PCs. These two actually contested last time as well, um, where Jeremy Roberts um, won by 175 votes. This time, Pazma won by 900 votes. And were there other writings in the area that uh, you were keeping a close eye on? Yes. Um, in Kingston in the Islands, Ted Sue of the Liberals took the seat for the for the Liberals from the NDP after the NDP, um, the former city member for the NDP decided not to run again. As well, um, in Glengarry Prescott Russell, 
Amanda Simard of the Liberals, who was actually a formal, former conservative, lost the seat to a conservative challenger. She had been a member of the Conservative Party before, left caucus and was an independent, and then joined the Liberal Party. So the PCs were able to take that seat back. All right, so I want to take a step back and uh, bring everyone in. Uh, Charnel, I'll start with you. Are there any big takeaways uh, from the election in your specific region and what we can expect in the next uh, couple of years? Yeah, so um, another riding that I wanted to point out is Thunder Bay Superior North, which was also a pretty close race last night. Um, so that was Michael Gravel's seat, and he's represented uh, the riding for over two decades. Um, but unfortunately, he's been having some health problems, and so he decided not to run again, which I don't think was an easy decision for him. Um, and so, as I said, in, uh, in 2018, Thunder Bay Superior North was a close race between Liberals Michael Gravel and NDP's Lise Vaudois. And um, last night, again, close race, but uh, Vaudois uh, won with uh, 800 votes. And Justin, any key takeaways from the election? Yeah, well, despite uh, there only being a couple ridings that flipped, there were some very close races. Uh, the riding that I live in, Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas, the former sitting member Sandy Shaw uh, held her seat for the NDP, um, but the margin was not as wide as last time. And in Niagara Centre, there was only an 850 vote difference between uh, the first place NDP candidate and the second place PC candidate. But I guess just the main thing I would say is uh, no, overall voter turnout was pretty low. The highest uh, voter turnout in the area was in uh, Niagara West, and that was only something like 52 percent. Uh, a lot of it was in the 40s or 30s. And as we know, Ontario saw the lowest voter turnout uh, in history. Uh, so that's definitely notable. Seems to be the, the big story from the election. Uh, Sarah, any last takeaways uh, from the election for your region? What's interesting about Ottawa and the surrounding areas is that all the parties actually managed to make some pickups last night. Um, we have some representation from the PCs. We have an NDP pickup and the NDP keeping um, their seats. And then we have um, a Liberal pickup as well. Four out of Liberals' eight seats are in Ottawa and Kingston. Very interesting stuff. Sarah, Charnel, Justin, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight and for your insights. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Jan. Sure. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.